everyone, let's go back in time together and learn something new. Introduction The Samurai, Japan's elite warriors, offer a fascinating lens through which to view the history of feudal Japan. Their influence was felt not only on the battlefield but also in the realms of culture, politics, and social structures. As we begin this comprehensive journey, we will trace the rise and fall of the samurai class, explore their cultural impact, and highlight the ways in which their legacy continues to be felt today. Chapter 1, Emergence of the Samurai, 8th-12th Century The emergence of the samurai in feudal Japan marks a significant shift in the country's socio-political structure, commencing during the Heian period. This transition from court nobility to military dominance was gradual and intrinsically linked with the societal and political changes taking place in the period spanning the 8th to the 12th centuries. The Heian period is often romanticized as a time of refined culture and aristocratic dominance, characterized by developments in poetry, literature, and arts. Yet beneath this facade of elegance, the seeds of a transformative socio-political change were being sown. As the power of the imperial court began to wane, there emerged a need for a dedicated military class that could maintain law and order and protect the interests of the landed elite. The genesis of the samurai can be traced back to the provincial warrior clans that the imperial court called upon to quell internal rebellions. These clans, from areas such as Taira and Minamoto, developed a reputation for their martial prowess and commitment to their duties, leading to their gradual ascendance in the feudal hierarchy. One of the primary threats to the imperial court during this time was the Amishi, indigenous groups living in the northeastern part of Honshu who resisted central control. The imperial court relied heavily on the provincial warrior clans to suppress the Amishi rebellions. These warriors were initially referred to as saburai, indicating their roles as attendants to the nobility. The term later evolved into samurai, which came to define this burgeoning warrior class. By the late Heian period, these provincial warrior clans had gained considerable military and political clout, effectively becoming the real power holders behind the nominal rule of the court nobility. This shift of power from the court to the military was not abrupt but rather a slow transition over several centuries. During this time, the samurai didn't just function as military professionals, they were also large landholders, managing estates and wielding economic power. The line between aristocrat and warrior thus began to blur. Another crucial factor contributing to the rise of the samurai was the Ritsuryo system's gradual collapse, a legal and administrative code based on Chinese Confucian models. As the Ritsuryo system failed, private landholdings, shun, became increasingly prevalent, and local officials, often samurai, took on judicial and administrative duties that the central government could no longer handle. These samurai were then rewarded with land and status, further solidifying their power. Towards the end of the Heian period, the relationship between the samurai and the imperial court became increasingly strained. The warrior class had grown powerful enough to challenge the authority of the court. The culmination of these tensions came in the form of the Genpei War, marking the end of the Heian period and the beginning of the Kamakura period. While the emergence of the samurai occurred over several centuries and was neither linear nor inevitable, this time is essential for understanding the foundation upon which the samurai class built its power. These centuries set the stage for the establishment of a military government that would rule Japan for most of the next millennium, marking the samurai's journey from provincial warriors to ruling elite. Chapter 2, Establishment of the Samurai Class, 12th-13th Century the late Heian period marked the twilight of the old court aristocracy and the dawn of a new era where political power was firmly held by the samurai warrior class. This crucial transitional period was characterized by a power struggle involving the two preeminent warrior clans of the time, the Taira and the Minamoto. The Taira, under the leadership of Taira no Kiyomori, initially enjoyed ascendancy, having defeated the Minamoto in the Hogan Rebellion, 1156, and the Heiji Rebellion, 1160. Kiyomori, a student ambitious, managed to achieve an unprecedented level of influence and power for a warrior. He married his daughter to Emperor Takakura, and his grandson became Emperor Antoku, essentially placing the imperial family under the control of the Taira. However, the Taira's dominance was not to last. A resurgence from the Mitamoto, 
driven by the ambition and military prowess of Minamoto no Yoritomo, resulted in the five-year-long Genpei War, 1180-1185. This was more than just a civil war, it was a conflict that would decide the future direction of Japanese governance. Yoritomo's shrewd strategy was not confined to the battlefield. He also launched a savvy political campaign, positioning the Minamoto as the legitimate power, rallying disaffected clans and presenting himself as a viable alternative to Taira rule. The final battle of the Genpei War, the naval battle of Dan no Ura, resulted in a decisive Minamoto victory and the tragic death of the child emperor Antoku, bringing about the end of Taira influence. After the Genpei War, Minamoto no Yoritomo received sanction from the imperial court to establish the Kamakura shogunate, marking the birth of Japan's first military government in 1192. Although the emperor remained the figurehead, real power now resided with the shogun, who controlled the country's military and civil affairs. Yoritomo's shogunate wasn't simply a military dictatorship but a complex, multi-tiered system of governance. He established a new warrior administration that gave loyal samurai vassal stewardship over land and regional governance in exchange for military service. This system, known as the Buk Shohato, became the foundation of samurai dominance in Japanese politics. The samurai during the Kamakura period were not merely warriors, they were now also Hito, estate stewards, and Shugo, provincial governors, responsible for tax collection and maintaining order. The samurai class began to evolve from warriors serving court nobility to the ruling elite themselves. The authority and rules set up during this time period formed the basis of samurai power and their way of life. This period solidified Bushido, the way of the warrior, emphasizing virtues such as honor, courage, loyalty, and self-discipline. It is during the Kamakura period that we can witness the consolidation of the samurai as a distinct social class that operated within a set code of ethics and behavioral expectations. Thus, the 12th to 13th century marked the cementing of the samurai's role as a ruling elite, a position they would maintain and refine throughout the next several centuries of Japanese history. Chapter 3, Samurai during the Shogunate Periods, 14th-16th century Following the establishment of the Kamakura Shogunate, the 14th to 16th centuries saw the evolution of the samurai from the military elite to the central power brokers of Japanese society and governance. This era, encompassing the Muromachi and Sengoku periods, was a time of significant change and upheaval in Japan. The social, political, and military activities of the samurai during these periods reshaped Japan's feudal landscape and left a profound impact on the country's history. The Muromachi period, 1336 to 1573, also known as the Ashikaga era, began with the fall of the Kamakura shogunate and the rise of the Ashikaga shogunate, established by Ashikaga Takuji. The Ashikaga shoguns were less effective at central control than their Kamakura predecessors, resulting in greater power for regional samurai lords, known as daimyo. These daimyos held vast territories and maintained powerful armies, and their influence and independence ushered in a period of decentralized political power. The samurai during the Muromachi period served in various roles beyond that of mere warriors. They were regional rulers, administrators, and even arbiters of civil disputes. As the shogunate's power diminished, the daimyo and their samurai retainers rose in prominence, assuming responsibilities that ranged from tax collection to law enforcement. A distinct samurai culture also began to flourish during this period, particularly influenced by Zen Buddhism, which resonated with the samurai due to its emphasis on discipline and focus. The latter part of the Muromachi period descended into the Sengoku period, 1467-1615, known as the Age of Warring States. The name is fitting, as this era was characterized by widespread civil war, social upheaval, and near-constant military conflict. The shogunate's power was significantly reduced, and Japan was fragmented into semi-independent regional domains ruled by daimyos. These daimyos and their samurai vassals engaged in relentless warfare for territorial control, resulting in changes in military tactics and the organization of samurai armies. Despite the pervasive violence, the Sengoku period was not merely an era of destruction. It was also a time of significant social, political, and cultural evolution. Amid the chaos, daimyo sought to consolidate power and govern effectively, leading to advancements in castle design, agriculture, and trade. The experience of constant warfare led to the evolution of samurai tactics, including the use of firearms, which had been introduced to Japan in the mid-16th century by Portuguese traders. The social upheaval also challenged and expanded the role of samurai in society, 
Though they remained warriors at heart, the period's exigencies required samurai to be diplomats, strategists, and administrators. These challenges, along with exposure to foreign ideas and cultures brought by European traders and missionaries, led to an expansion of samurai culture and thought. The ideals of loyalty and honor remained at the core of the samurai ethos, but these values were continually reinterpreted and redefined throughout the tumultuous Sengoku period. Chapter 4, Unification of Japan and the Samurai's Role, Late 16th-17th Century The late 16th and 17th centuries were a transformative period in Japanese history, marked by a transition from the divisive Sengoku era to the relative peace of the Edo period. The central figures of this dramatic shift were three unifiers, Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Ieyasu, who each played crucial roles in ending the century-long civil war and re-establishing centralized control over Japan. The samurai class, having evolved significantly during the preceding periods of strife, found new roles and challenges in this changing landscape. Oda Nobunaga, the first of these unifiers, was a visionary daimyo whose innovative military tactics, such as the use of firearms on the battlefield, helped him gain control over large parts of Japan. Nobunaga's ambition and military prowess were vital in the process of unification, but his rule was cut short when he was betrayed and forced to commit seppuku in 1582. Despite his untimely death, Nobunaga had set a course towards a unified Japan. His successor, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, was a former samurai who rose through the ranks to become one of Nobunaga's most trusted generals. After Nobunaga's death, Hideyoshi took up the mantle and continued the process of unification, showcasing his administrative acumen. Hideyoshi was known for his land surveys, which reasserted central authority, and his policy of sword hunts, which aimed to disarm the peasantry and solidify the samurai's status as the only warrior class. These reforms further institutionalized the social standing of the samurai class. The final unifier, Tokugawa Ieyasu, had been a cautious ally of both Nobunaga and Hideyoshi. After Hideyoshi's death and the pivotal Battle of Sekigahara in 1600, Ieyasu took control and established the Tokugawa shogunate, marking the beginning of the Edo period, 1603-1868. The Edo period was a time of peace and stability. The samurai, who had been crucial to the warring states' military campaigns, now found themselves in a society where their martial skills were less in demand. As a result, they transitioned into administrative roles within the shogunate bureaucracy, taking up positions as local magistrates, tax collectors, and inspectors. This era witnessed the formalization of Bushido, the way of the warrior, which became the ethical guideline for the samurai class, emphasizing virtues like loyalty, honor, courage, and integrity. Yet this period was not without challenges for the samurai. The shift from a martial society to a bureaucratic one created economic difficulties for many samurai. Their stipends often did not keep pace with the rising costs of the burgeoning urban economies of the Edo period. Despite being the top of the social hierarchy, many samurai lived modestly, and some even fell into debt. Culturally, the Edo period was a significant time for the samurai. With the absence of warfare, many samurai embraced education and the arts. They patronized cultural forms like theater, kabuki, no, literature, haiku, rinku, and different art forms. Their role expanded from warriors to cultural custodians, and they became central figures in promoting and maintaining Japan's cultural identity. Chapter 5, Decline of the Samurai, 19th Century The 19th century marked the sunset of the samurai era, a period of dramatic change and upheaval in Japanese history. The Meiji Restoration in 1868 signaled a comprehensive shift in Japan's political, social, and cultural order. The samurai, who had been the ruling class for centuries, faced significant challenges and transformations, leading to their eventual decline and abolition as a distinct social class. In the mid-19th century, Japan was under immense pressure from Western nations seeking to open the country for trade after over two centuries of self-imposed isolation during the Edo period. This encounter with the West, coupled with internal pressures such as economic instability and growing dissatisfaction with the shogunate rule, led to a political crisis. This culminated in the Meiji Restoration, a revolution that toppled the Tokugawa shogunate and restored imperial rule under Emperor Meiji. This era of restoration marked the end of feudalism and the beginning of modern Japan. The new government aimed to transform Japan into a modern, industrialized nation-state capable of competing with Western powers, this modernization process led to drastic changes, which significantly impacted the samurai class. In 1871, 
the new Meiji government enacted the Haidere Edict, which abolished the samurai's hereditary class privileges, including their right to carry swords and their exclusive role as the nation's armed forces. The edict was part of a broader series of reforms known as the abolition of the samurai class, Haihan Chicken, which sought to create a more equitable and centralized state. Furthermore, the government established a modern, Western-style conscript army, rendering the samurai class's martial skills obsolete. In this new structure, samurai were incorporated as officers, but the rank-and-file soldiers were conscripts drawn from all classes, undermining the samurai's unique role as warriors. Financially, the samurai were severely affected by the government's decision to replace their traditional stipends with government bonds. With Japan's rapidly changing economy, these bonds quickly devalued, leading many samurai into financial hardship. The rapid and radical changes brought about by the Meiji Restoration were not met without resistance. Several rebellions were led by disaffected samurai, the most famous being the Satsuma Rebellion of 1877 led by Saigo Takamori, often referred to as the Last Samurai. Despite their fierce resistance, the rebellions were quelled by the government's modern conscript army, underscoring the eclipse of the samurai's martial dominance. However, the end of the samurai class did not mean the end of their influence. Many former samurai took up professions in business, academia, politics, and other areas of society. They utilized their education and administrative skills acquired during the Edo period to find success in these fields. In fact, many of the Meiji era's influential figures in government and education were from samurai backgrounds, including several prime ministers. Culturally, the ethos of the samurai lived on in Japanese society. The values of Bushido, such as loyalty, honor, and self-discipline, continue to be influential, shaping Japanese character and identity. The samurai also became romanticized figures, their legends and stories permeating Japanese literature and art. Chapter 6, Cultural Legacy the samurai's cultural legacy is undoubtedly one of the most enduring aspects of their heritage. Despite the formal abolition of the samurai class in the late 19th century, the ethos, aesthetics, and cultural practices associated with them continue to permeate various facets of Japanese life. This influence can be observed in Japanese literature, performing arts, martial arts, philosophical thought, and even in daily rituals and ceremonies, such as the tea ceremony. The cultural imprint of the samurai, deeply ingrained in the fabric of Japanese society, has also transcended the nation's borders, becoming global symbols of Japanese culture. In literature, the figure of the samurai is often a central theme. Classic Japanese texts such as the tale of the Haika provide a literary depiction of the Genpei War and the rise of the samurai class. In modern times, novels like Musashi by Eiji Yoshikawa portray samurai's life and philosophy, emphasizing their indomitable spirit, discipline, and pursuit of personal perfection. Samurai ethics and aesthetics also find expression in poetry, particularly in the haiku and tanka forms, with poets like Matsuo Basho, a former samurai, becoming legendary figures in Japanese literature. The samurai have also had a significant impact on Japanese performing arts. No and Kabuki, two distinct forms of traditional Japanese theater, often feature samurai themes and characters. No, characterized by its slow, stylized movements and use of masks, frequently presents tales of famous samurai, their heroic deeds, or their tragic ends. Kabuki, known for its dramatic plots and elaborate costumes, also portrays samurai, typically focusing on historical events or moral conflicts faced by the samurai class. In the sphere of martial arts, the legacy of the samurai is unmistakable. Many of the traditional Japanese martial arts, such as Kenjutsu, the art of swordsmanship, Kudo, the way of the bow, and Jujutsu, unarmed combat, have their roots in the combat techniques used by the samurai. The samurai's influence extends to modern martial arts such as Kendo, Iaido, and Judo, which not only incorporate the physical techniques but also the spiritual and philosophical aspects of the samurai's warrior code, Bushido. One of the most distinctive practices associated with the samurai is the tea ceremony or chado, the way of tea. This ritualistic preparation and presentation of matcha, powdered green tea, were appreciated by the samurai as a form of spiritual discipline. 
The tea ceremony embodies principles that resonated with the samurai's ethos, such as harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility. Zen Buddhism also had a profound impact on the samurai class and vice versa. Zen's emphasis on discipline, mindfulness, and the pursuit of enlightenment in the present moment resonated with the samurai's values and lifestyle. The practice of Zazen, seated meditation, became popular among samurai as a means of cultivating mental clarity and emotional control, essential traits for warriors. Beyond these specific practices and art forms, the influence of the samurai permeates broader aspects of Japanese aesthetics and ethics. Concepts such as mono no aware, the beauty of transience, wabi sabi, the beauty of imperfection, and yugen, mysterious profundity, all central to Japanese aesthetics, echo the samurai's acceptance of mortality, their pursuit of simplicity, and their appreciation for the depth and complexity of existence. Chapter 7 Modern Perception and Influence The samurai of feudal Japan, an institution abolished more than a century ago, continue to captivate the modern imagination, both within Japan and around the world. These iconic warriors have become symbols of nobility, courage, and honor, largely due to their embodiment of Bushido, the way of the warrior. This perception has been fueled and shaped by various forms of media, including literature, cinema, television, and even video games, which often depict samurai in an idealized, romantic light. In literature, the samurai have been a constant source of inspiration. Classic Japanese texts continue to be widely read and translated, while contemporary novels, comics, manga, and graphic novels often feature samurai characters or themes. In these narratives, samurai are typically portrayed as heroes, characterized by their martial prowess, stoicism, and unwavering loyalty. These works often emphasize the romantic aspects of the samurai tradition, such as honor, self-sacrifice, and the pursuit of perfection in their craft. The silver screen has been another significant avenue for the popularization of the samurai image. From the mid-20th century onwards, samurai films, or chanbara, sword-fighting movies, became a staple genre in Japanese cinema. Filmmakers like Akira Kurosawa became internationally renowned for their samurai epics, which combined intense action sequences with intricate human dramas and moral dilemmas. Films such as Seven Samurai, Yojimbo, and Ran have left an indelible mark on global cinema, influencing not only Japanese filmmakers but also international directors, notably in the Western genre. In the realm of television and streaming media, the samurai trope has been adapted into numerous anime series and dramas, such as Samurai Shampoo and Ruroni Kenshin. These series often combine historical settings with elements of fantasy or alternate history, offering fresh takes on the samurai narrative. Similarly, video games like Ghost of Tsushima and the Samurai Showdown series have introduced interactive samurai narratives to a global audience. The influence of the samurai extends beyond the arts and media. The ethos of the samurai, embodied in the principles of Bushido, continues to be admired and studied. In business, concepts of loyalty, discipline, and continuous self-improvement, all reminiscent of the samurai code, are often cited as fundamental values. Martial arts schools around the world that teach samurai-associated arts like Kendo, Iaido, and Aikido also preserve the samurai's physical and philosophical traditions. However, it is important to note that the modern perception of the samurai often involves a degree of idealization and simplification. While the samurai are celebrated for their honor and bravery, the darker aspects of the samurai era, such as violent warfare, rigid social hierarchy, and the often brutal enforcement of order, can be overlooked. It is essential, therefore, to approach the samurai image with a nuanced understanding, acknowledging both the admirable and the less commendable aspects of this historical class. Despite the complexities, the samurai's enduring influence and appeal are undeniable. As icons of Japanese culture, they provide a link to a historical past, a source of national identity, and a wellspring of inspiration for various forms of cultural expression. This potent combination ensures that the samurai, and the values they embodied, will continue to resonate in the global consciousness. More Information and Facts Part 1, Detailed Exploration of Samurai Armor and Weaponry 
the samurai of feudal Japan were masters of a diverse array of weapons and armaments. Their military equipment evolved significantly over the centuries, in response to changing combat conditions, technological advancements, and shifts in samurai culture and tactics. The katana is perhaps the most iconic weapon of the samurai, symbolizing their martial prowess and personal honor. Derived from the earlier Tachi, the katana emerged in the late Kamakura period, 1185-1333, and gained prominence during the Muromachi period, 1336-1573. The katana is characterized by its distinctive curved, slender, single-edged blade, circular or squared guard, and long grip to accommodate two hands. Crafted with high carbon steel using a complex folding and forging process, the katana combined a razor-sharp edge with a resilient spine. The creation of a katana was considered a sacred process, with swordsmiths participating in Shinto rites before commencing their work. Samurai traditionally wore the katana with the blade facing upwards, allowing for a swift, single-motion draw and cut attack. The yumi, or longbow, was another vital weapon in the samurai's arsenal. In the early stages of samurai warfare, archery from horseback, yabusame, was the primary mode of battle, with the sword taking a secondary role. The yumi was asymmetrical, with the grip positioned at about one-third of the way up rather than in the center, a design that allowed for greater height without being impeded by the horse the samurai was riding. Samurai archery became a less dominant form of combat with the increasing prevalence of close-quarter battles, yet it remained an essential part of the samurai's training and ceremonial practices. The naginata, a pole weapon with a curved blade on the end, was widely used in the Kamakura, 1185-1333, and Muromachi, 1336-1573, periods. Its long reach made it an effective weapon against horsemen and foot soldiers alike. In later periods, the naginata became associated with female samurai and was often part of a noblewoman's dowry. The armors of the samurai, known as yoroi, also evolved over the centuries. Early samurai armor was modeled after Chinese and Korean designs and was made of lamellar, small iron or leather plates laced together, offering excellent mobility. The o yoroi, or great armor, became common in the late Heian period, 794-1185, primarily designed for mounted archery. This armor was large and ostentatious, designed to demonstrate the wealth and status of the wearer, as well as to provide protection. In the Sengoku period, 1467-1615, warfare became more infantry-based, and samurai armor adapted to become lighter and offer more protection against firearms, which were introduced by Portuguese traders in 1543. The newer style of armor, known as Tosai Gasoku or modern armor, was constructed from iron plates instead of lamellar, providing better resistance against bullets. It's also worth noting that the design and decoration of samurai weapons and armor were significant. Not just tools of war, they were also considered symbols of a samurai's identity, rank, and spiritual power. Armor could be lavishly decorated with family crests, moan, and intricate designs, often featuring motifs from nature, Buddhism, and Shinto. The creation of both weapons and armor involved a blend of skilled craftsmanship, high artistry, and spiritual practice. Part 2 – Women in the Samurai Class Women within the samurai class, often referred to as onabugeisha, played a more complex and multifaceted role in Japanese society than is commonly recognized. While their lives were shaped by the social norms and gender expectations of the time, many women of the samurai class had significant influence within their families and communities, and in times of conflict, some took up arms alongside their male counterparts. Historically, women of the samurai class were expected to manage the household, which in the case of a prominent samurai family, could be a sizable and complex estate. They were responsible for finances, correspondence, overseeing servants, and raising and educating children. Given that samurai were often away due to their military commitments or political duties, these women had to demonstrate strong leadership and administrative skills. The education of samurai women generally included training in literature, poetry, calligraphy, tea ceremony, and other traditional arts, consistent with their roles as cultural custodians. Alongside this, they were also trained in martial arts for self-defense and, in some cases, actual combat. This martial training usually involved the naginata, a long pole weapon with a curved blade, which was considered suitable for women due to its balance of reach and weight. 
One of the most famous Onabugeisha was Tomoe Gozen, a late 12th century female warrior renowned for her bravery and strength. She was an exceptional archer and swordswoman who fought in the Genpei War, one of the most significant wars in the early samurai era. Tomoe Gozen was known for her valor and is often depicted in Japanese literature and art, symbolizing the involvement of samurai women in warfare. In the tumultuous era of the Sengoku period, 1467-1615, several other female samurai gained recognition. One such figure was Tachibana Jinshio, who led the Tachibana clan and its army in the absence of a male heir. Another was Nakano Takeko, who fought and died during the Boshin War at the Battle of Aizu in the 19th century. However, with the relative pacification of Japan during the Edo period, 1603-1868, the role of women in the samurai class became more restricted. The social changes under the Tokugawa shogunate emphasized Confucian ideals, which stressed patriarchal norms and relegated women to more confined domestic roles. The involvement of samurai women in martial activities lessened, although their cultural and domestic responsibilities remained significant. Part 3 – Influence on Modern Japanese Law and Government Understanding the influence of the samurai on modern Japanese law and government requires delving into the socio-political transformations that Japan underwent during the Meiji period, 1868-1912. With the fall of the Tokugawa shogunate and the restoration of the emperor, Japan embarked on a journey of westernization and modernization, which also impacted its legal and administrative systems. However, it is essential to note that these new structures did not entirely cast aside the country's feudal past, including the influence of the samurai class. In fact, the influence of the samurai was pivotal during the early Meiji period. Many leaders of the Meiji Restoration, including Saigo Takamori and Kido Takayoshi, were of samurai origin. The newly formed government sought to remodel Japan into a centralized, constitutional state, taking cues from the Western powers of the time. The Meiji Constitution, promulgated in 1889, was heavily influenced by the German Constitution, but it also bore marks of Japan's own socio-political history. While the new government was structurally a constitutional monarchy, the emperor was seen as a divine figure of supreme authority, a concept rooted in the ancient Shinto belief of the emperor as a descendant of the gods. The samurai code of ethics, Bushido, also stressed the importance of absolute loyalty to one's lord, which in the modern context, translated into loyalty to the emperor. This idea shaped the principle of kokutai, or national polity, central to the Meiji constitution, which emphasized the emperor's symbolic and unifying role. The spirit of Bushido, with its focus on honor, integrity, and diligence, was also incorporated into the new societal ethos. The Meiji government championed these values, not just among the political elite, but also among the populace, as they sought to build a modern nation-state. Samurai ideals influenced the development of education, encouraging discipline, loyalty to the state, and moral conduct. In terms of administrative systems, the hierarchical nature of samurai society found echoes in the newly established bureaucracy. The samurai, who had served as bureaucrats during the Edo period, brought their administrative experience to the modern Japanese government. A merit-based civil service examination system was introduced, somewhat akin to the tests samurai had to pass to achieve their rank. The structure of the modern military also drew inspiration from the samurai class, emphasizing discipline, hierarchical command, and duty to the state. The influence of the samurai and their ethical code persisted well into the 20th century and can still be observed in contemporary Japan. Concepts such as giri, obligation, and on, debt of gratitude, integral to the samurai code of conduct, continue to shape interpersonal and societal relationships. Similarly, the samurai's respect for authority and their sense of order and discipline are often seen as influential in Japan's administrative efficiency and low crime rates. Part 4 – The Psychological Aspect of Being a Samurai Understanding the psychological aspect of being a samurai requires a deep examination of the Bushido, the way of the warrior, a moral code that informed the samurai's way of life and profoundly influenced their mindset. Rooted in Confucianism, Buddhism, and Shintoism, Bushido emphasized virtues such as loyalty, honor, courage, righteousness, sincerity, and self-control, shaping the mental discipline and worldview of the samurai. The samurai's existence was dominated by the constant awareness of death due to their vocation's hazardous nature. The Bushido code instructed them to live as though they were already dead, to commit each day to integrity and duty without fear of mortality. This readiness to die, whether in battle or by their own hand, was a central part of the samurai's mental conditioning. 
One of the most revealing manifestations of this mindset was the practice of seppuku, or harakiri, a form of ritual suicide by disembowelment. Seppuku served several purposes. It was a method of capital punishment for disgraced samurai, an act of protest, or a way to restore one's honor and that of their family in the face of inevitable defeat or disgrace. The act was performed according to a strict ritual, often in front of witnesses, emphasizing the importance of formality and ceremony within the samurai culture. The samurai performing seppuku would typically compose a death poem before ending their life, a poignant expression of their worldview, discipline, and resolve. The samurai's psychological makeup was also shaped by Zen Buddhism. The teachings of Zen, with its focus on meditation, mindfulness, and the pursuit of enlightenment, appealed to many samurai. Zen provided them with a philosophical framework to confront death and the transitory nature of life. It also offered practical mental training, helping them to achieve Mushin, a state of mind free from thoughts of anger, fear, or ego, enhancing their martial skills and decision-making on the battlefield. Discipline, duty, and honor were integral parts of a samurai's psyche. Their rigorous training, both physical and mental, instilled a high degree of self-control and resilience. They were educated in literature, calligraphy, and the tea ceremony, promoting cultural refinement alongside martial prowess. This dualism of the cultured artist and the fearless warrior was a distinctive feature of the samurai ethos. The Bushido code and its influence on the samurai's psychological makeup extend beyond the samurai class's abolition in the late 19th century. Its emphasis on honor, discipline, and moral integrity has permeated many aspects of Japanese society and mentality. It continues to influence modern martial arts and has contributed to Japan's work ethic and approach to business and social relationships. Part 5, Comparisons and Interactions with Other Warrior Classes In the annals of world history, the samurai share the stage with various other distinguished warrior classes. One comparison frequently drawn is between the samurai and the knights of medieval Europe. Both classes were a privileged military elite, bound by codes of honor, bushido for the samurai, and chivalry for the knights, and served their respective lords in a fealty-based system. The roles of both samurai and knights encompassed more than just martial prowess. They were expected to be cultured and refined, often serving as patrons of the arts. Samurai were trained in calligraphy, poetry, and the tea ceremony, while knights engaged in courtly love, music, and verse. These cultural endeavors were seen as vital to the ideal of the well-rounded warrior in both cultures. However, while knights' power typically came from their land ownership, the samurai, particularly during the Edo period, were more akin to a bureaucratic class, receiving a stipend from their lord rather than drawing wealth from landed estates. The samurai also held a more dominant role in their society, as their military government ruled Japan for much of its history, whereas knights were part of a broader feudal system with a strong, centralized monarchy. Turning to the interactions between the samurai and other cultures, it's crucial to consider the Sakoku period, 1635 to 1853, during which Japan pursued an isolationist policy, restricting foreign relations and trade. This period was not one of total isolation, as limited foreign contact was maintained, primarily with the Dutch and Chinese, through the port of Nagasaki. These interactions led to intriguing cultural exchanges. The Dutch, for example, introduced Western-style gunnery to the Japanese, which some samurai incorporated into their warfare tactics. The books and knowledge brought by the Dutch also sparked Rangaku, Dutch learning, a movement that led to significant advancements in Japanese medicine, astronomy, and art. The arrival of Commodore Matthew Perry of the United States in 1853 signaled the end of Japan's self-imposed isolation. The samurai interacted more with foreign powers, resulting in a range of responses, from those who were openly hostile to foreign influences, such as the Sonojoi, revere the emperor, expel the barbarians, movement, to those who favored westernization and modernization, leading to the Meiji Restoration and the eventual abolishment of the samurai class. Part 6. Controversies and Myths The history of the samurai, like many other aspects of history, is rife with myths, controversies, and misconceptions that have been propagated through time. Several of these arise from the romanticization of the samurai, 
particularly in Western media, which has a tendency to present an idealized, often simplified version of the samurai. One of the most common myths is the portrayal of the samurai as always honorable, selflessly loyal warriors who strictly adhered to the Bushido code. While honor and loyalty were indeed central tenets of the Bushido, in practice, the interpretation and adherence to these principles varied greatly among samurai. Their behavior was as much a product of their individual personalities, the political context, and the practicalities of survival as it was of their supposed moral code. Some samurai were known to switch allegiances when it served their interests, a practice known as Gekokuho during the Sengoku period. Similarly, the perception of the samurai as solely a warrior class can be misleading. Particularly in times of peace, such as the Edo period, samurai were more likely to serve as bureaucrats, scholars, and artists than engage in combat. The notion of the samurai as a sword saint who spent all their time perfecting their martial skills is a romantic exaggeration. Samurai were also educated in literature, philosophy, and the arts. The role of the katana, the samurai sword, is another area where reality often diverges from myth. The katana is frequently portrayed as the samurai's primary weapon and a symbol of their soul. In truth, throughout much of the samurai's history, the longbow was considered their primary weapon, especially during the Kamakura and Muromachi periods. The shift towards the katana did not occur until the more peaceful Edo period. As for controversies within samurai history, one notable example concerns the Meiji Restoration. The role of the samurai in ending the shogunate and restoring the emperor is often celebrated. However, it's worth noting that this period also marked the official end of the samurai class. The adoption of a Western-style conscripted army and the abolition of the samurai's hereditary privileges were a source of resentment among many samurai, leading to rebellions like the Satsuma Rebellion led by Saigo Takamori. These myths and controversies are a reminder that history is often nuanced and complex, and the samurai are no exception. They were not just warriors or bureaucrats, but individuals living in a rapidly changing world, making decisions that were sometimes in line with the ideals of their class, and at other times, contradicted them. By recognizing these myths and controversies, we can appreciate a more accurate, richly textured understanding of the samurai's historical reality. Part 7, The Samurai and Japanese National Identity the samurai, with their code of Bushido and their cultural and military contributions, have become deeply intertwined with Japanese national identity. The process through which this occurred is a fascinating aspect of modern Japanese history and culture, one that can be explored through various avenues such as state-sponsored history textbooks, public commemorations, and national symbols. State-sponsored history textbooks in Japan have, on occasion, been a point of controversy, particularly in terms of how they handle sensitive issues from Japan's past. The portrayal of the samurai in these textbooks, however, is generally that of upholders of justice, loyalty, and self-sacrifice, reinforcing their iconic status. These representations often emphasize the samurai's adherence to Bushido, the romanticized code of chivalry, while de-emphasizing their role as a military class, thereby contributing to the image of the samurai as virtuous, disciplined, and selfless, qualities admired and aspired to in Japanese society. Public commemorations, such as festivals and memorial ceremonies, also play a significant role in reinforcing the image of the samurai as national symbols. The annual Soma no Maoi festival in Fukushima Prefecture, for example, involves participants donning samurai armor and reenacting historic battles. These festivals keep the memory and the valor of the samurai alive and provide a touchstone for national identity. The influence of the samurai can also be seen in the broader visual culture of Japan. The samurai figure prominently in manga, anime, and films, often in roles that valorize their dedication, courage, and loyalty. The enduring global popularity of films by directors like Akira Kurosawa, which dramatize the lives and struggles of the samurai, speaks to the power of the samurai as an emblem of Japanese culture. Moreover, the samurai and their code of Bushido have been invoked in various nationalistic contexts. During the militaristic prelude to and during World War II, the government propagated samurai values as a model for all Japanese citizens to bolster national unity and resilience. This association continued into the post-war era, with companies in Japan's booming economy often encouraging a form of corporate bushido, where loyalty, discipline, and dedication were highly valued. Thanks for watching to the end. See you in new videos.